What is up my dudes? Cheap bastard talking to ya. In today's video, let's take a look at the slowest i7 ever made. You guys all think you're so much better than me. Oh, Meg, that is the least fancy thing I have ever heard. Take a look at its specs, and they don't look good. 45 nanometers? What's it happen? I think, I think this is a reflection of how, like... My test system specs are here on the screen, and as you can see, I tried to make things fair for this i7-920. Yo guys, subtract 851 from this i7's model number. The first game tested was Shadow of the Tomb Raider on 1080p high settings. As you can see here from the results, I chose this game because no matter how bad the CPU is, the game manages to get bottlenecked by the GPU. The second game tested was Plants vs Zombies Battle for Naperville, and things got bad. I usually get around 80 to 100 FPS on various CPUs, but with this i7 I got these results on 1080p high settings. Red Dead Redemption 2 got its FPS scores trimmed by around 25% in comparison to other processors. I got these benchmark figures on 1080p balance settings. Metro Exodus was next, and I can't say anything bad about these benchmark results on 1080p Ultra settings, cause they were... And now, I present you Doom. This game on 1080p Ultra settings performed surprisingly well and returned me these FPS numbers. But Just Cause 3 ended the CPU's two game streak of good performance because the gameplay was full of random frame drops. Take a look at these numbers. 1080p high settings was used, but my level of entertainment wasn't high. Counter-Strike Global Offensive was also not very pleasant to run, especially when filming, but it was playable. Or was it? Anyways, despite random freezes occurring throughout the match, I got these benchmark results on 1080p lowest settings. Rocket League's performance was really great and smooth. I got these benchmark results on 1080p highest quality settings. But GTA 5 actually disappointed me. I expected this. but got this. All bad jokes aside, the game was actually playable. These are the FPS benchmark results on 1080p Ultra settings. And finally, Overwatch benchmarks. On 1080p Ultra settings, the game was actually lag-free with these FPS numbers. Okay now, my final thoughts of this processor. It really is kinda outdated in 2020, but it can run some games if necessary, but I wouldn't recommend using something more powerful than GTX 1060 or RX 580 with it. Subscribe for future goodness and I hope that you will stay cheap my dudes. Cheap bastard out.